สวัสดีค่ะ Welcome to Hot Thai Kitchen. So after years of Hot Thai Kitchen, I finally feel like you guys are ready for a hardcore Thai dish. So we're gonna make n a m p r i k a p i n a m p r i k is our term for a spicy dip, and kapi is fermented shrimp paste. So this is a super basic dish that every household makes, but it is a bit of an acquired taste, and it's not something I would. Give someone as a first introduction to Thai cuisine, but once you've acquired the taste, I mean there is nothing like it. It is so delicious and umami and bursting with flavor, and it's super easy. Let's get started. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rehydrate my dried shrimp. So dried shrimp are going to give this umami and also just meatiness. Okay, so I'm just going to pour some just plain water. And then I'm gonna microwave it for a minute or however long it takes your microwave to get the steaming hot. You can just use a kettle if you want, but this is faster. Ah, hot. So that just needs to cool a little bit. It just needs a few minutes. Let's talk about shrimp paste. Shrimp paste is a fermented tiny little shrimp or krill, and the Thai one. This is the most common brand that you can find at Southeast Asian grocery store, and when you open it, it is this delicious gray paste. Pro tip: don't keep it open if you have no plans of using it. Otherwise, your place starts smelling like shrimp paste. Um, so that's the Thai one. You can also, if you can't find this, use the Malaysian one. It comes in a dry block like this. It's a little drier, but. Taste smell almost exactly the same, and you just have to slice it off like butter. Except don't put it on your toast. Um, so those are both good to use. And then there's also a Chinese one that might be more available for some of you. The flavor is a little bit different. It's a little saltier. I think it's an okay substitute if it's used in a small amount, like in curry paste things like that. But for this one, where the flavor of the shrimp paste really is everything, I would try to stick with the Thai or the Malaysian, just so you have a, you know, representative flavor of what it's supposed to be. And then what it is not is this. This is also a product that's labeled as shrimp paste, but it is not fermented shrimp paste. It is just the shrimp fat in the head, you know, the orange stuff, shrimp tamale that they cook with some seasoning, and then there'll be lots of oil in it because it's been cooked, and that is delicious in fried rice and stir fries. But it is a very different thing that cannot be used in this recipe. Just FYI. Okay, let's get pounding. There's not much to do. Starting first with. The hardest thing to pound, which is dry shrimp, and nam prik is one of those things that is such a basic part of Thai cuisine. When people go out to eat, there's usually one nam prik, and it's like a veggies and dip. You know what I mean? Like it's a palate cleanser because there's lots of fresh vegetables. It's spicy. Okay, so now I got my dry shrimps in here. I'm gonna pound them until they're fluffy. Okay, so that's good. You still have a few chunks, but for the most part, it's broken up. Then two cloves of garlic and as much chilies as you want. I'm just gonna do one for this because we're not making a lot, so like all that chili is gonna be concentrated in a small amount. So you want this completely fine. Yeah, whenever you're pounding a lot of stuff. The way to do it without overexerting yourself is to do it in a way that you start with the tough things and build softer things on top of it. Okay, so now that that's super fine, so you can't really see chili skins are totally okay, but you don't want to see chunks of chilies, chunks of garlic, or anything like that. Okay, oops, and then. Palm sugar. So I'm gonna add my palm sugar, and this looks like a lot, but trust me, by the end this is done, you will not even think there was any sugar in it. There, sh it shouldn't taste sweet at all. But if you don't add it, it'll be so salty, so sour, completely off balance. So this is absolutely important. So I'm just pounding until the big chunks are broken down, and eventually it'll dissolve in all the liquid, like so, because the sugar has dissolved. Okay, now the star of the show, the shrimp paste. So this stuff that I'm using is actually artisanal shrimp paste that I got from Thailand, which I save for things like this. 
where you can really taste the shrimp paste. Now at this point, I'm just pounding so that it's mixed no longer in big chunks. Oh yes, the smell is starting to come out. I mean, talk about umami. There is nothing more umami than this. The dry shrimp, the shrimp paste. I mean, this, no MSG needed right here. That's the consistency you're looking for. And then the liquids will go in. So now lime juice, lots and lots of lime juice. This should be tart and salty. Mix that in. And at this point, you just use a spoon. The shrimp paste is already salty, but I'm still gonna add a little bit of fish sauce anyway. Be not so much because I need it saltier, but fish sauce has a different flavor, right? A different set of complexity that I like to add just a little bit, not too much. And then what I'm gonna add now is some water because this is really intense. You can serve it like this, but I feel like if I serve it like this, I can only put a little bit on each thing and it would be too much. But if I dilute it with some water, then I can really load it on more and it's more satisfying that way. So just a couple tablespoons and you can taste and adjust at this point. All right, that's it. Here we go. This is exactly what I am talking about. Delicious umami paste. I need to give it a taste because every, and you really should because everybody's shrimp paste is going to be Diff have different flavor, different saltiness, and so on and so forth. Oh, yes. So good! So good! There's nothing quite like it. Now, it looks a little dull, so we're gonna garnish it with some extra fresh chilies, just into big chunks. And now, it's just a little bit more colorful. This was super easy, but it's only half the battle or a quarter of the battle. Three other three quarters of your battle is actually what you serve it with. Before we move on, I wanna tell you about today's sponsor who is once again, Skillshare. So Skillshare is an online learning community for creative and curious people and they offer thousands of inspiring classes on topics like illustration, videography, productivity, and yes, culinary classes. A new class I'm excited about is Cookie Decorating for Beginners. Create incredible edible art by Lori Shannon, AKA Icing Artist, a YouTuber whom some of you might know. It's a really well-structured class with each lesson focusing on a specific technique and she makes these amazing designs look totally doable. Skillshare wants you to focus on the learning so there are no ads and they're always launching new premium classes so you can just keep going wherever your creativity takes you and it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. So the best part is the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity. So this is where you're gonna spend most of your time. So, okay, most households, it's not this elaborate platter, but I just wanted to show you like, if you were going to a nice restaurant, what would be the fully loaded and pick up be. So let me first just transfer the dip into our serving bowl right here. Nice. Okay. Let me walk you through some options for serving this with, okay? The most, the simplest one is just some steamed and fresh vegetables, anything that you eat with a dip. Classically, there are some steamed cabbage, some uh, steamed long beans, and I got steamed Brussels sprouts because I thought, hey, Brussels sprouts are like tiny, mini little cabbage, so it should work. We'll find out, but I think it should work. Some raw cucumber, anything else, carrots, whatever crunchy stuff would work as well. And then we've got fried vegetables, which come in two different forms. So I've got this one here, which is eggplant, that's just simply dipped in egg and then pan fried. That's it, that's all you do to it. You, you don't season anything because this is all the seasoning. And then my favorite two things, fried mackerel. Uh, this is an Asian style mackerel, which is very short, but you can use the regular big mackerel, it works totally fine. And a vegetable omelet. So typically we make an omelet using a vegetable called cha om or climbing wattle. Uh, but here I can't find it. So I like to use skyline or Chinese broccoli, just finely chop it, mix it with some eggs, you fry it until it's nice and golden brown on the bottom side. You carefully flip the whole thing and cook it until it's all the way cooked through. If I could only have one thing, it would be this. All right, and of course you need rice and then you're good to go. Time to eat, get our rice in. And I'm going for my favorite. Ta-da! 
if you've never had this before, a little at a time. Little goes a long way, okay? That's a little. That's a little. <laughs> That's a little. Well, for me, I'm hardcore, so don't need a little. <sighs> unmistakable. That smell, unmistakable. So good. So good! This is like flavors of Thailand. Like you eat this and like immediately transport it to Thailand or just Southeast Asia in general because in, in like Malaysia, Indonesia, they also have dips similar to this. It's so packed full of umami. It's salty but it's also tart from the lime juice. But that sugar that we added, balance it out. It does not taste at all sweet. But again, it's a well-balanced flavor. Oh, I just... I. If you've never had it, there's nothing I can say that will give you an idea of what this actually tastes like. So you just have to try it. So the recipe, as always, will be on HotThaiKitchen.com. And a special thanks to our Patreon members who help support the show. If you want to know what that's all about, check out the link in the description below. And if you make this, I definitely want to see a photo of it. So tag me at HotThaiKitchen everywhere. Alright, thank you as always for watching. And I will see you next time for your next delicious Thai meal.